Um, I'm Pia Hental, I'm the director of Searching Eva and we're running in this year's Panorama and we're um, nominated for the Teddy Awards, which I'm very excited about. Hi, welcome to the 33rd Taddy Award. My name is Jean Berbobak, and this time we are discussing the movies Searching Eva with director Pia Helen Tal. Hi, welcome to the Taddy Awards. Welcome to the Berlinale. Um, so tell us about how did this journey started with Eva? How did the whole idea come about? So I think it was in, in 2014 when uh, Georgia Malatrasi, the co-author, the creative mm -hmm. producer, came to me. We were working together. Yeah. Um, and she came to my desk and she said, Pia, I'm not sure if it's because I'm really bored at work or if this blog here is really genius. So read it and check it out and let me know. Mm -hmm. And I read it and I couldn't stop. I was just like reading on and on and on and I was going backwards because Eva started from a very young age on. Uh -huh. So I just kind of read her years backwards. Yeah. Um, and I was just really... Um, I don't know, I think I was really captured on the first side because she was just so brutally honest. I mean, apart from the fact that, of course, she's like cool looking and it seemed to have a very exciting, out of the norm life. She was just, just like so honest and she just shared everything yeah. as if there was no filter um, that we usually come across when we meet people for yeah. the first time. Right. There's things they show and there's things they're ashamed of. And Eva seemed to be not ashamed of the things I'm ashamed of. And I was just so like, nice, that must be so freeing um, mm -hmm. to have yeah. that. Yeah, right. And I mean, it's all, and it appears in the movie as well as like kind of a double-sided sword, I would say, in the sense that so many people leave her comments throughout the movie where they say that they felt very empowered <laughs> by it and very inspired and it really helped them to overcome some insecurities that they had but then we of course have like all these comments that oh my god you're disgusting and what is this that you are doing so so i think that was a very interesting dynamic in the film can you tell us a bit about that yeah i mean um it's for me it was um yeah also two-sided because on the first glance i found like on her block a community of kids mainly women but kids from all over the world that felt somehow inspired by Eva, yeah. you know, if she was writing about like um, an idiotic um, fashion photographer who grabbed her boobs while doing the shoot and she spoke very honest about it, all of a sudden a bunch of girls started to talk about bad experiences with men and right. there arose like a picture of, of, of women in society that I have never kind of felt like was represent, that was before me too, um, yeah. that I've never felt in such a like a dense, big um, picture before, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So I was a lot of girls and and um, and guys that felt not represented by society felt really inspired by her, and and it was like an open um, space to communicate and to share um, yeah. life experiences. On the other hand, um, you have um, you have voices that <coughs> judge her life um, that. Um, I, 
are also really representative of this society that Eva is trying to escape from, where they're trying to put her in a box, where they're trying to define her, where they're um, very moralistic towards her life, very catholic sometimes, where they say, okay, you, well, you've had many sex partners this life, or why don't you shave your armpits, you're such a beautiful girl, or why, do you, why don't you smile more, or where you feel like you can tell by the comments so much about the, the convention these people come yeah. from. Um, and the and the way they want would like to see a girl live yeah. her life. Yeah. Um, so these sides were, I felt really in contrast to each other, but at the same time really representative of society. Yeah. Um, and Eva dealt with it in such a brave way, uh, where she, I don't know, I think she always took what people said kind of for. She never felt offended, I felt, you know? She was not right. like... Um, of course, she sometimes said that's a very invasive question, but she said, I know where you're coming from, I understand the context, why you think the way you think, but that's just really narrow-minded to think that yeah. way, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. And I mean, it's, it's good that it comes up because it's such a huge part of the film, um, which discusses gender, and gender norms and at some point in the movie Eva says I never thought I was that thing when people say girl mm -hmm. um, and I think with all this with, with her really free spirit she truly deconstructs these um, yeah these binary gender norms that are so prevalent in our society still um, how did you go about this specific theme in the film um. Well, it's in Eva's life so much, so um, it was clear from the very beginning that this is going to be a topic, also because it's an important topic to me. Yeah. Um, because at some point I just didn't know what should that be anymore. Like, what do you expect a woman exactly to be? What right. do you expect a man expect exactly to be? What, what is this weird box of woman? Yeah. What is it? And Eva just deconstructs that really well. And, um, we knew that we will not have like a, um, a storyline where Eva has like a personal development in any sense, mm -hmm. which we could have somehow done because yes, over the course of these years, she started from sleeping with a bunch of men and having boyfriends to kind of digging more into women, like sleeping yeah. with women, then like thinking, okay, I'm definitely gay. I'm like, I'm into women. And then, no, no, I think I'm into both. And mm -hmm. you know, going from like, discovering yeah. her sexuality and more and more discovering that she actually doesn't want to define it and she doesn't want to give somebody the answer yes I'm straight or I'm gay yeah it doesn't matter so if you want to put me in a box do it but I'm not gonna do it um, and um, because we know we knew we didn't want to create this personal development of her because I don't I, we didn't think it's that interesting mm -hmm. um, we thought okay we will the whole film will work that way we'll take certain topics like sexuality and scenes that kind of um, show the theme in different lights yeah kind of circle around this topic you know mm -hmm. so it's not not like one it doesn't give you one straight answer about this either you yeah, know certainly. it's like it's rather like that that here's a scene what it means to be that um, thing uh, yeah. where you can't define or that's another way how other people react with it. And here's another scene, you know, it's just yeah. rather like, like a cluster, yeah. which doesn't lead somewhere straight. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. it's all very fluid. I mean, and you just talked about sexuality in this film, um, which is a very refreshing representation of how it is something that, that's in a constant change and, uh, and that doesn't necessarily need any sort of strict definition. Um, and in that sense, I think the film is very political. Um, what do you think about that? I hope so. Yeah. You... To me, it is for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, to me, the I mean, there's this Deleuze quote that this like the mm -hmm. private is um, personal is political, and I really I agree because I mean everything we do, the way we live, the way we if we fly or if we walk, what we eat, it's all very political. You know, it says yeah. a lot about the conventions that we're in. Um, and um, and I felt like when I when I came across Eva, there's a whole world in that one life, or the things she talks mm. about. There's a whole 
it says so much about the world and the way we live right now. Yeah. Um, so it's for me, it's very political. It's it's a very um, um, there's an utopia uh, that Eva yeah. somehow creates that I love. Yeah, <laughs> and this um, <coughs> particular fluidity it also translates very well. Um, to your filmmaking process, to the visuality of this film. There are many different techniques used in it. There are many different textures, um, a lot that refers back to internet art, a lot that refers back to social media. Then there are all these, maybe one could say classical, very stylized um, um, images in, in the film. Um, so how did this come? What, what was your approach visually and cinematically to this, to this story? So there were several things. I mean, we always knew that we wanted to have a, a lot of layers. Um, mm -hmm. the, the one layer must be Eva's life. Just mm -hmm. the very ground layer is like, okay, it's all going to happen on the stage of Eva's life. Yeah. Um, and then there's the, the layer of topics that we want to bring across that are really current topics, but really also important for us um, right now. Um, and are naturally kind of coming out of Eva's life. And yeah. then there's the, the layer of, of the feedback of the followers. Yeah. Um, and then there's the layer of Eva's self, self-representation, you know? Yeah. And then there's the layer of, um, we want to make very clear that this film is not a portrait about one girl and it's the truth about this one girl and it's going to reveal the, behind the curtain of Eva Kole, the, Yeah. That's the truth that she like. That's the thing she puts out there, and that's the truth the film is going to show. No. Yeah. One, we we're not interested in. It. We were really um, trying to to make a film that was super self-aware. It's a film, and the audience mm -hmm. is super self-aware. It's an audience, and it's looking at a girl and judging the girl, and it's you're kind of left with your judgment towards her alone in the in the cinema, um, and you can make out of it whatever you want, but that's just your truth, and it's not the yeah because. Eva just said this uh, very nice thing when I asked her to to make a little line about the film. She said, um, uh, this is a film about a girl in the process of self-abolishment. The girl is in me because representation is a lie. Mm. And I think it's true. I c yeah. There's no fucking way that we can put her in a picture and it's going to be the truth. You know? yeah. uh, and it's not interesting either. Um, we just treat the, treat the things that she, she brings up. Um, and kind of throw it back on the audience, I think. Um, and the cinematic approach, um, yeah, I think it was, we wanted this film to be as undefinable as Eva. Yeah. It could have never been a straight narrative because that would have just not make any sense with her, yeah, you know? Yeah, it would have defeated. Yeah, it needs to be spirit, um, yeah. out of the norm. It needs to be fluid as well. It needs to change from a very classical mm -hmm. picture to a very um, documentary picture to something very staged. Yeah. Like it needs to bring all of these together yeah. and uh, be one and still be whole. It needs to still function as a whole thing, uh, but, um, but not be so definable. Um, yeah. So it was important for us to... But it was difficult. Huh? I mean, but, but it, it's definitely the case because, uh, I mean, the audience definitely gets a sense as if it's a documentary, but it's at the same time really not. Mm -hmm. Like you also feel that, yeah, I don't know, like there is a lot of playing with us and it's very self-aware of the whole performance aspect of, yeah, of putting yourself out uh, so deeply as, as Eva does in this, in this film. Um, so I think, yeah, there is definitely this undefinable character about the film, um, which was also yes. very exciting um, for, for me as, as someone from the audience, um, because another technique that came across is that Eva 
quite often looks back at you. Nice. Like she stares at you. You got that? Nice. And then you, and then you are a bit like, ooh, what's happening? So nice. like this whole, I, because you get so immersed in this looking at her and then all of a sudden like you get back that gaze. Was this something that you wanted to play yes, with? Yes, it was super important for me. I was thinking yeah. that I will never get, like I mean, it's never going to be happening that people get this, but I'm so happy that you did. I think so, it's, it's very prominent. Yeah, so. nice. No, that was really important for me that you have, you know, it's like, I think that's also very a thing about women, you know, you get, you're so used to getting looked at. There's mm. this thing, I, this, I think Kate Sampreno said it, she's like, um, the, uh, the girl is like a tourist constantly looking at herself from the outside. Yeah. And I think that's really true. Like when you grow up as a girl, you, you're so used to the gaze. I mean, you, you look at yourself with the gaze of the other because yeah. you're just so looked at being, at, like used to being looked at. Yeah. And, um, and so it was for me really important that Eva at some point is not the object of the film anymore, but the subject looking back at you. Mm -hmm. and to me, the, the moment where I hoped that it would ha happen was the moment where um, she kind of give, give you, gives you the summary of the documentary and yeah. says, this is the film here. Yeah. And then she lays uh, down and mm -hmm. the music comes and then yeah. at the end of the picture she smiles at you. Yeah. And you kind of like feel, oh. yeah, like oops, <laughs> yeah. Okay, she's there. She knows I'm here Busted. too. Busted. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm happy that you. Yeah, totally. That you feel uh, that way. And actually, I mean, the film explicitly deals with this gaze, especially on female bodies. Um, and I think Eva says something like, um, "Whose responsibility it is that I'm being looked at." It's, is, is it my responsibility mm -hmm. or is it yours, mm -hmm. like staring at me and looking at me and mm -hmm. following me in the context of social media? Yeah. Um, what did you want to explore about, about this phenomenon? Because this is also something that I think is very urgent in our times when people spend so much time on social media, just, yeah, like gazing at others and, and really diving into their lives while remaining detached from, from the reality. Yeah, yeah. somehow. Um, well, as I said, um, to me it was important that the audience knows that we know they are there, mm. that they're part of this, tri that there's a triangle. Yeah. Um, you know, the film at the beginning says, I'm a film. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and Eva looks at us yeah. and we're like, okay, there's a character and we know she, she's kind of self-aware of that, you yeah. know. Um, so I must be the audience then. And um, um, and I hope somehow, I don't know if that's like too meta to get in a film when you watch it for the first time, but I hope really that you, that you feel that your, whatever you category you try to put her into, it's kind of your preconception. It comes from mm -hmm. your background. It's, it's, um, it's your moral values you grew up with and that you try to put it into question and you try to wonder, is it really the way I want to look at the world mm -hmm. and the way yeah. I want to look at myself? Because my first um, real um, struggle I had when I came across Eva was that um, I was really like back, thrown back on myself and I realized how much self-hatred I had internalize yeah. Yeah. and that I really um, was uh, during the shooting of the film like getting rid of bullshit one bit at a time more and more and more and more Be oh, and it really opened like um, another way to look at the at the world and at myself somehow you know because yeah. because I realized okay this whole it's not society around me that is patriarchal or is um, um, it doesn't like me. It's just me that I'm already like censoring myself so much, and I'm ashamed of certain things. And I thought it was super liberated and free, and no. Yeah, <laughs> you know? right. I mean, that's interesting to know because the film certainly invites you as an audience to, well, to question these, yeah, these preconceptions that you have, uh, and how you you look at this character, and also how you look at this film. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's interesting to know that like it it went like yeah. that for you as well. Another topic that, that uh, appears in the film, and I think it was super important and super refreshing mm -hmm. to see a representation like that, is sex work. Mm -hmm. um, so can you talk a bit about that and, and, and how you went about representing it? Because I think it was very special in, in this film. In what way? I think it was uh, refreshing in the sense that, you know, we don't 
often see representation of sex work as as a toy, as as, in, as something that actually liberates the person. And um, yeah, so I I think it kind of defeated these stereotypes of what sex work can mean yeah. within society. Yeah, so I think, okay, the whole sex work topic is like, I have to um, split somehow between two things because one yeah. important topic is work for um, um, yeah, definitely. For, for mm. Eva and also for, for us, I think, in the society that we're in right now because Eva kind of said with 14, uh, I try to work as little as yeah. possible because I just don't want to be in like a one workerist identity somehow. Um, and she kind of chose the job where she has to work the least, uh, where she gets the most money for the shortest amount of time. Yeah. Um, and which hurts the less, least somehow. Um, so for her it's really work. Um, it's nothing that, if she wouldn't do it if she didn't need money, for mm -hmm. sure. It's not like that she loves it, it's yeah. still work. And it's still something that she could, if she could, she would get rid of it. And uh, there's my editor right there. Um, um, and, um, Sorry, yeah, now I lost. Now I'm confused. Yeah, it's sex <laughs> and work. Sorry, back yeah. Um, and so, yeah, she once said, for example, um, when we uh, shot with the sugar daddy and he was asking her some questions, um, why she's doing it, why doesn't she get a real job? She gets this question so much. Why don't you study? You're such a smart girl, yeah. you could study. Why don't you make money with your writing, blah, 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 blah. Um, and she said, look, I mean, um, for me, you've done massages before. You got your money with massages. So for me, it's nothing but a massage. Instead, I just give it my, with my pussy. You know, yeah. it's, that's it. Why do you make such a holy thing out of my vagina? Like, mm. why? Um, yeah. This is also some, like, somewhat like a very Catholic thing. It's not, it's not any different than my hand, yeah. you know? Um, so we try to go about sex work like that. It's, um, it's nothing less or more than a job she does. Yeah. And it liberates her in the sense that she can uh, have a lot of free time. Yeah. And that she can have her own money and that she's not defined by a boss eight hours a day where she is probably, I mean, doing it for th three years, you form your head around this job, yeah. you know? So we try to show it that way. Yeah, absolutely. And then there is another topic which uh, maybe I can say one more thing about that actually please because I think what the big problem with um, sex work is that it always gets thrown into the same box with sex work that is not um, that women don't do freely you know mm -hmm. where yeah. they're forced into sex, yeah. sex work um, and it's somehow always sex work is just one thing uh, the forced one and the not forced one but it's just like a very difficult different yeah. thing so um, yeah, yeah, that was and that was important. and that was good good to see <laughs> yeah. uh, in the film for sure. So there is also the film deals with the topic of home. Um, Eva moves constantly; like she just can't stay in one place. Even though she says that she's a Berliner now, um, also she visits quite frequently back uh, to her parents. Um, what? What, what, what could home mean in this very undefined world that she, that she lives with, that, that is her world? Yeah, that's what, I mean, her words to this was like, um, mm, I never really experienced a home, so, which means I can recreate, like decide for myself what it is and recreate mm -hmm. it new. Yeah. Um, and I think, what her home is, is always kind of where she feels at home at that point, but it doesn't need to be necessarily a place. Sometimes it's a person um, or her books or something that she, she connects with in that moment. Yeah. Um, I think her mom is somewhat a home as well, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a difficult, I have, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, it can, be, it can be an open, yeah. it can be an open thing yeah. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> th there is no need for a specific answer, obviously. Um, let's talk a bit about social media as well, um, because this is an important tool for Eva to, 
to communicate with others and for self-expression. Um, how do you see this whole social media landscape, uh, which also appears in the movie? In general? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's there, so... It's, it's <laughs> definitely there. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't have like an answer to that, really. I don't, I don't think it's like, either good or bad. It's just mm -hmm. like somehow it's, it's an extension of real life. Yeah. Just faster and, and um, more intense. Yeah. Um, but the whole, the same dynamic somehow appear there, you mm. know? I was just talking with Eva about the internet in general and somehow it's like, there is like a, I feel like there is like a potential of a utopia where voices are yeah. very, like there's a big possible of um, democratizing, I don't know if that's the right term in English. The, yeah, democratizing, um, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, voices, you know, because yeah. you, everybody can have one. <clears throat> and that's what I just said in the beginning where I felt, wow, there's a whole, there's a whole, world of girls that, that are connected just through social media and all of a sudden there's there's um there's there could be a movement you know mm -hmm. um so there's this potential um yeah. but then of course it's been capitalized like everything else yeah. as well and so there's the other end of this too um but that's just also just real life in in another um layer you know yeah. it's nothing Nothing else, I think. Yeah. Would you consider, even though this is um, this is quite a weird question okay. about about this particular film, which tries to avoid any sort of definition, mm -hmm. but would you consider maybe maybe I will ask the question like this: Would you consider that your film follows a specifically queer logic? I hope so. You hope so? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I really hope so, because yeah. other thing else would mean that uh, there's a certain definition of it. Mm, yeah. yeah, right. So I hope so, yeah. very much. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm quite certain about it. That, at least that's what I got as a feeling. Good. So Pia, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best for the Berlin Alley. Thank you. And I hope that we will see each other soon again, maybe with another movie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>